Hi, my name is Jared, and this is Horror Obsession. Today, Slasher School continues. <laughs> with a discussion of the final jump scare, or as I called it in my Structure of Horror video, the re-establish the horror trope. To get started, let's give a couple examples of what this trope looks like. In Halloween, the movie ends with Dr. Loomis shooting Michael a bunch of times, him falling from a balcony, and then when they go to check, he is mysteriously gone. The movie ends with some static shots of the suburban house in the surrounding area, seeming to imply that Michael could be lurking around any corner. Another perfect example is the original Friday the 13th, which as a reminder had Jason's mother as the killer, but did introduce Jason briefly at the end of the movie. Alice is sitting on a boat, reminiscing on how crazy it is she survived the night, when suddenly Jason pops up out of the water to drag her under. Also, let's not worry about the fact that Jason is clearly a teenage boy in this shot and he is a full-grown adult for part two, even though during part two in the campfire scene they say it's only been five years. Just stay focused on the kills and the characters and you'll be fine. Alright, so why do slasher movies bother with these end scenes? The opening scenes of these movies typically establish the horror by showing someone getting murdered by the killer and preferably featuring the killer's weapon. This creates suspense and tension for the rest of the movie because we are now expecting the characters in the movie to get killed, so the audience knows information the characters do not. But by the end of the movie, there is no point creating suspense because, well, the movie is over. That would be a bit like showing a trailer for the movie you just finished watching in the theater. Possibly entertaining, likely pointless, and definitely confusing. The function of these scenes does also appear on the surface to be mostly to establish sequels. Everyone nowadays realizes the monetary potential of slasher franchises, and most audiences are pretty savvy to the shameless studio executives trying to milk horror fans for as much money as possible. With formulaic, tired, monotonous remakes until the heat death of the universe, so I wouldn't blame anyone for assuming this is done strictly to build hype for the inevitable sequel. Establishing at the end of the film your villain is still alive is one way to build that hype, but as a counterpoint to that, the original Halloween did not have a planned sequel, so why did John Carpenter do it? In some ways, ending a horror film this way undermines the fundamental point of any movie, which is to tell a story. To have the hero and not defeat the villain by the end denies the audience a fundamental sense of catharsis and victory of good versus evil, something many people absolutely hate being absent in their movies. The horror genre is notorious for this, as most people know the ending will be at best bittersweet since most of the cast of victims are likely to finish the movie significantly less alive than they were at the start. So why risk alienating these audience members just to try and drum up some hype for a sequel? I think these scenes exist also as a means of trying to trick audiences into remembering the movie as being more scary than it actually is. What I mean by this is many movies try and include some kind of end scene which seeks to evoke the same emotion as the rest of the movie, which is a complicated way of saying comedy end scenes will try and make you laugh, action will try and establish a sense of grand stakes, and horror will try and make you scared. Lots of comedies end with bloopers, for example, which is designed to make the audience remember the movie fondly. Marvel movies end with their scene to set up future villains or other heroes, and horror movies have the final jump scare. Jump scares are effective, but kind of cheap ways of making someone feel scared. When you get startled, you get a quick spike of adrenaline, which then goes away equally quickly. <laughs> Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god, I'm so startled. They are considered cheap in the industry because they don't really take any nuance or skill to do. You basically just combine a loud noise with something entering the frame quickly and voila, a jump scare. Even good movies utilize them, however, so they do have their place. To summarize, horror movies want the audience to feel as though they were scared while watching the movie, and a good way to do that is to add a jump scare at the end. While you're at it, however, you might as well also throw in some hype for the sequel, and by combining these two objectives, it becomes clear why the final jump scare in its current form exists. Alright, now that all the minor tropes are out of the way, let's take a look at the three core tropes of a slasher movie. The final girl, the villain, and the victims. Starting with the victims. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. <laughs> 